So today we are going to actually be talking about schools and kind of like the overall education system um, as it's something that me and Polly are, are both really passionate about. And I know Polly, you, this is something that I, I've heard you talk about uh, on numerous occasions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First of all, yeah, we, we love the love. So thank you for the love that you guys have been showing us and thank you for all the positive ratings that we get. And uh, make sure that you also let us know who uh, you would like to have on the podcast and uh, if there's any particular topics that you would like uh, us to address, Billy and I to address. So thank you guys. And uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about, uh, looking forward to talking about education. Education I'm very passionate about, very passionate about. You know, under, under these conditions right now, with, with all the politics, one of the things that, I, and of course, this isn't going to get political, but I'm, you know, personally, I'm, I'm uh, not affiliated. I, or, or I'm always going to go on, you know, what somebody stands for, and I always look for how people are approaching education. Yeah. And my personal belief is that, you know, there's, there's, I don't want to put a bunch on the back of educators, but I do believe if we're going to reduce poverty, reduce the need for welfare, reduce incarceration, in a, you know, big reduced issues related to mental health. There are a lot of positive outcomes that can occur if we put more focus on education and not the way that we're doing it because I think the system is broke. And I'm not saying that we're not, I'm not saying there's not good schools out there and we're not producing good outcomes uh, because there are good schools out there. But just because you're producing good outcomes in some places doesn't mean you couldn't be producing better outcomes there and in all the places that are not producing good outcomes and the places that are near and dear to my heart are schools that are in high poverty. I've worked in a number of these schools, Billy, and when I go to these schools, I, I, I just, I'm, I'll drive up to these schools and I see kids walking from the neighborhood and I'm like, they don't, they don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. And it's not that there's not well-meaning teachers in there, but you're fighting like history, you're fighting, you know, generational poverty, uh, you're fighting uh, pure contingencies where kids are learning from one another. Let me give you a case example of when I first got into working in schools with high poverty. It was in 2006, and I was a behavior analyst. And behavior analysts typically go into schools, and you're going into a classroom to take a look at an individual student that might have some needs. Well, there was a special ed class in this one particular school, and I was when I show up to the school. I'd walk through the hallways and I'm like, what? what's that? It was actually my first gig as a consultant, as a behavior analyst. And there were kids from the time they got dropped off at the bus loop to the, you know, into the cafeteria, to the hallways, to me walking down the hallways. And it was like the kids, Billy, had taken over the school. Mm -hmm. Taken over school. And the one class, and the one class that actually, this is a true story, man. One class that was doing very well is usually the class that challenging. It was the special education class. Okay, so there are a couple, a couple of important things.